now. Former CIA station chief Dan Hoffman, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, both Fox News contributors. Mr. Speaker, there is a clear distinction. Ali North touched on it. The Trump plan was based, going to be based on conditions on the ground. Factor number one. Factor number two is Donald Trump was believed. If Donald Trump made a threat, they believed it because he had a track record. While, while ISIS grew under Biden and Obama, ISIS was systematically destroyed and defeated under Donald Trump. He said it, he did it, and the Taliban knew damn well what would happen if, in fact, they didn't abide by any agreement that went on. They wouldn't have tried this under Trump, would be my argument. Your thoughts? Well, look, I mean, first of all, I don't know that Joe Biden has threatened anybody with anything, so there's no way of knowing. Uh, the Biden worldview seems to be attack your allies, ignore your enemies, uh, pretend that bad things aren't happening. I mean, I watched his speech this afternoon, and I thought, if you, for most people, if you took what you were seeing live coming out of Afghanistan, uh, the crowds, the, the fear, the takeover by the Taliban, and then you looked at this speech by this guy who was clearly totally out of it, uh, he has no idea what's going on. And his number one goal in that speech was to blame anybody else. He said, you know, the buck stops here. He didn't mean that. Uh, the buck stopped with the Afghan army. The buck stopped with Donald Trump. The buck stopped somewhere else. But the fact is, this is a major American defeat. It is going to have huge consequences. As you pointed out earlier, it's going to embolden the Chinese, whether it's in Taiwan or the South China Sea, or frankly, they're going to become allies of the Taliban. Uh, because they want the minerals in which uh, northern Afghanistan is enormously rich, uh, and they're going to be quite happy. They don't care what the Taliban does to women. They just want the minerals. As recently as last Thursday, Dan Hoffman, and you worked all these years in the intelligence community, they were telling us, oh, at best, they, didn't, they wouldn't make it to Kabul for another 90 days at least. Uh, on every level, how could they have been so wrong? How could Joe Biden just a couple of weeks ago be saying, oh, there's no, it'll never happen. The Taliban will never be able to get back in power. And yet now they, now it is the, what, you know, Emirates of Afghanistan. Here we go. I mean, it's, Islamic it's aspirational, Emirates of Afghanistan. wishful. Yeah. Yeah, it's aspirational, wishful foreign policy. Uh, just as the administ Biden administration was arguing that if the Taliban wanted to receive international recognition and foreign aid, that they wouldn't attempt to take over the country by force. Well, that ignored the reality that China and Russia, uh, not to mention Iran and Pakistan, are going to support uh, the Taliban. We, our greatest ally in that region was the former government of Afghanistan. And what really concerns me going forward is that we used to own the battle space. And we had a sizable intelligence community footprint. So when we uh, served our mission to find and fix those terrorists so we could detect and preempt threats, we had the kinetic capability to preempt them before they were visited on our shores. We don't have that anymore. And the Taliban controls the country. So what I wanted to hear today and what I hope we hear soon from the Biden administration is what's the plan to deal with those threats? We're a few weeks out from the 20th anniversary of of 9-11, and irony of ironies, we are at greater risk now from Afghanistan than we ever have been before. Mr. Speaker, we got 10,000 Americans there, and we're not in control of that country or that airport. How are they going to get those Americans home? Well, I think they'll mostly gradually get out of there, but it's very disturbing that uh, apparently the administration announced yesterday Americans wouldn't be automatically given any kind of priority, uh, which is the opposite of the policy we've always had up until now. But, you know, I, th I think there's a deeper thing here. <laughs> the Taliban has been around for a long time. They've had a set of goals. They are a religious fanatic group. They are going, what's going to happen to women, and President George W. Bush was exactly right today to say that the greatest thing he fears is what's going to happen to young girls and to women. Uh, and as you may remember, when, when Clister was the ambassador of the Vatican, she hosted a conference on religious liberty. We had a young woman from Iraq who had been captured by ISIS and had been basically passed around as a slave. That's the kind of stuff we're going to see in Afghanistan. And it's sad wow. that not a single women's group on the left is up in arms over what's about to happen.
We're going to pick up on that on the other side of this. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Dan Hoffman, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.